Now, look, there seems to be a growing number of prison officers having inappropriate relationships with inmates. 18 female officers were dismissed at one jail alone. The incidents have raised questions about vetting processes and the quality of training provided to new prison officers. So what, who is to blame? What is to blame? Is it poor vetting, inadequate training or power imbalances? Joining us now is forensic psychologist Dr Naomi Murphy. Naomi... So, you know, when you first look at this story and you're seeing how many, particularly female mm. prisoners and officers who were going with inmates, your first thought might be, oh, is this the attraction of a bad boy or is it something much more sinister that here? Is it about coercion? Is it about blackmail? Is it about their naivety and they haven't been trained right? Where would you start looking at this problem? I think that's a really good question, Esther. And I think actually it's very easy to just locate the responsibility within the individual who's committed the wrongdoing. But actually you have to think about the role of the organisation in this. So officers only have a six week training process, which in other countries might be as long as two years. And what training does is give people more confidence. Prisons are environments where people don't feel safe. And so actually people are exposed to really strong emotions like fear, hatred, disgust. And during those kind of situations where people feel strong, uh, strong, strong negative emotions, people tend to bond together in adversity. You see similar things with NHS staff, for instance, having relationships with one another at a very high rate because of the fact that people are bonding in traumatic circumstances. So I think, you know, lack of training and experience does play a role. I think Mix. the fact that women are a minority is also a contributory factor. So the culture is, you know, it is quite a misogynistic culture. It's, it's harder for women to fit in and belong. And actually, if you're not feeling safe, you don't feel like you belong in, the, in your staff group, then people tend to look for other, other people to connect with. I mean, I, I, I take your point there, Naomi, but it, but it does seem extraordinary the number of, in particular, female officers and, and male inmates. I, I can't work out whether that, there's something sort of in that in particular or whether or not the papers just report those because for some reason they're more interesting to the public and actually there's lots of ma male officers having affairs with female officers that just don't get, don't get reported. I mean, what, what would your hunch be about that? Is there a particular reason why a female officer would be more attracted to a, a male prisoner or, or do you think that this is probably happening across the board, we, just, we only hear about those ones? Well, I think women probably are more vulnerable, as I say, because of being in a minority. And, the, you know, there is a culture where women are also exposed to sexualization from their male colleagues at times. And, you know, you've seen on, on the news news this week, actually, what happens with it when a minority um, sexualize um, women, that actually it can be a bit of a destructive force. Um, but the, the other issue that's there in prisons is, is it's, it's a quite a homophobic culture. So people don't see... Um, you don't see openly gay officers very often, male gay officers very often. And actually, there's much more suspiciousness about female staff. So a female prison officer going into a male a prisoner's cell will arouse suspicion in a way that a male officer doing that wouldn't. So people do, people just wouldn't even entertain the idea that the, there are homosexual relationships happening between male staff and male prisoners. There was something that I read here, though, which I thought was quite alarming. The number of female prisoners prison guards have increased by 27% in the last five years in line with diversity requirements, as if the diversity requirement has been of greater concern than maybe these relationships and better training. Personally, I, I don't think that's likely to be an issue because what you generally find is that staff groups where there's a lot of female staff tend to have lower levels of violence, actually, in prisons. And some of the best officers that I've worked with have been female officers who've been really good at calming and de-escalating a situation. So I, I agree that these figures are alarming, but I, I actually think they say something about the organisation's inability to help staff feel safe and protected. I think another factor is that when staff don't feel valued, um, they look for val validation and appreciation. And the prison service culture is not one that values staff. Staff often talk about feeling underappreciated, under suspicion, don't feel as if, uh, as if their employer has their back at all times. And, and then somebody said here, another point was, the women have got a captive audience here. There's no competition and they're enjoying the attention. Do you think that's right? I think
think that that may be a factor for some women, but I, I doubt that. I don't. I doubt that that explains it all in its entirety. I think it is quite a complex picture. Yeah. Naomi uh, Murphy, thank you very much indeed for joining us on that very it's complicated a, issue. It's a very it brought up lots of yes. points that we hadn't necessarily very, thought of. Very interesting. So let us know what you think about that. GBviews at gbnews.com.